Huh? Well, you can also use one of these ones. Because I have to t tell people a story, you know. Hmm. It's like cold. It's like super cold. This time the service is as chaotic as possible. It is uh, an absolute service disaster. It was out of Coke as well, so they are out of all the drinks. Apple juice was all that was left. Well done. Hey guys, welcome to another flight review. And today I want to talk about a flight that happened earlier this year on Oman Air from Muscat to Bangkok, which was very disappointing on so many levels from a customer experience that I want to share the story with you um, today. I personally think it's important that there are people on YouTube who call out the airlines and hold them accountable for the promises they make to their customers and ask those questions, you know, why did that happen? Why didn't you deliver what you promised? And this is what I do. You know, there isn't much to gain personally. You don't get rich by calling out airlines or it's not for the attention. Um, because eventually if you work against the big airlines or call them out on their promises, um, they won't like you very much. But I think it's important to do so because overall it will enhance um, your customer experience as well because most of the airlines, they take that feedback um, seriously and they try to improve. Um, don't know whether that's the case with Oman Air, but I have always received very nice feedback from a lot of airlines. So let's talk about my flight. So I had previous flights on the morning and I even did a video in 2018. So it took them an hour to serve those 10 aisles. They didn't serve anyone over there. Um, so I don't really get the service. It's definitely the slowest crew I've ever experienced. To be honest, my flight was shocking. It was a slow crew. They didn't manage to finish the service within four and a half hours. And it was overall a terrible uh, performance of the crew. And it was an underwhelming flight experience. Yeah, I posted that video on my uh, YouTube. Feel free uh, to check it out. So it's not a one-off because what I experienced on my flight from uh, Colombo to Muscat in 2018 was very similar to what I've experienced on my flight to Bangkok. So it all started in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. I successfully bid on an upgrade um, from Muscat to Bangkok for 365 euros, which I think was um, a really good uh, deal. So I went on my first flight with Oman Air in economy class. And when I landed in Muscat, I made my way to the customer service counter um, in order to get my new boarding pass. And when I went there, they said, my booking never went through, they don't have it in the system, but I can upgrade now for uh, 600 euros. It was confirmed. And now, and now it's all of a sudden it's very fixed. So you confirmed it, you confirmed the price. Where I was a bit confused because I had the confirmation email said here for 375 euros, and a bit on upgrade was confirmed and I was wondering why don't they honor the price. Um, they didn't give me any arguments really, but they said I only have to can pay now in cash and I would be upgraded to business class. I found it was all a bit fishy and weird, so I started recording. I just need to know, so because I have to t tell people a story, you know. Okay, if you're recording that stuff, you can be soon. Huh? Because you cannot record this one. I'm like, allowed to record that public, and if you post it in public, you have to. That is right. Is it a freedom of speech? I can say whatever. You cannot post the recorded that. I'm not recording. Yeah. Um, the experience, and when they noticed that I was filming this set, they're gonna sue me if that ends up on the internet. So I wasn't really in the mood to argue with them, and they being they were like a bit semi-aggressive. So I just grabbed my stuff, went to another counter where there was a guy who was very helpful, and he said uh, that happens quite often because if they have a last-minute upgrade somewhere where they actually charge a lot more money than the upgrade I bid on, they just uh, like bump people back to economy and then they sell the ticket for a higher price. It's a weird practice, but if Oman Air needs to do that, then that's fine. So and then I went to the gate, I got my camera ready. I was like still uh, pretty cool. I was like, okay, at least I'm um, gonna do an economy class review of Oman's Air flagship, the 787 Dreamliner. So guys, welcome from one of my favorite airports in the world. It's a very nice one here in Muscat. And today, 
I'm reviewing Oman. So anyways, I have to hurry up because the flight is departing in like 40 minutes. So let me rush to the gate and then we start the review. So I then boarded the airplane, uh, took my seat, um, did my usual video intro and uh, so we then taxied to the uh, runway and I could smell the food that they were heating up the food which they usually do actually on um, on shorter flights so as soon as you reach cruising out to they start serving food but I thought I cool it was an overnight flight so they just want to maximize the resting time have a quick uh, service clean up switch off the lights everyone can rest and sleep um, yeah but that was not gonna happen so also during takeoff, as you can see, my screen started playing up and then crashed for whatever reason. I mean, that can happen, you can restart it, and then usually the system works perfectly fine. So that was one thing. I told the crew, I followed up with him after half an hour. After one hour, I followed up with another crew and they never done anything about it, which was already like the first thing that was very upsetting. I was wondering, my in-flight entertainment isn't working. Can you have a look? Thank you. Question like uh, two hours ago, I told you my in-flight, can you fix the in-flight entertainment later? So, and then the actual service started after an hour and I was like, that's weird. I mean, you already heated the food on the ground and it took them so long to get it all organized, get the cards ready and they pulled it uh, through the aisles and it was a complete mess. There was no structure. Uh, they were like handing meals around the cabin. Um, it seems like that one card only had chicken, the other had only had beef. It was a complete service disaster. I've never seen anything like this and it took like hundreds and hundreds of economy class slides and I was like, oh my God. And people around me like, got actually really angry as well because everybody wanted to eat and rest and sleep. So in the morning when we arrive in Bangkok, everyone is at least a little fresh. Remember my flight a year ago when I said it's the slowest crew in the world? Um, they're just trying to regain uh, that title. Like nothing has been done. As you can see, there's like no food. Nobody in front of us has any food. And the guy disappeared into the uh, galley. This time the service is as chaotic as possible. Of course my in-flight entertainment still hasn't been fixed uh, and uh, yeah I don't know how to describe this. Um, it is uh, an absolute service disaster for two hours now and like there's no food, my in-flight entertainment is not working. Uh, well I, I don't want to complain now. There we go. He comes back. Let's see uh, how this is going to continue. So literally the guy on my eye, he took maybe 10, 15 minutes for, I don't know, five passengers. So it was super slow. And probably after like two and a half hours, he finally reached my aisle. Of course he was out of choice. He only had beef. And once the food arrived, it was cold. I don't have any more chicken. Yeah, out of chicken. All right, um, well beef then. If you don't have, give me something else. Uh, what do you have? Apple juices. Give me, give me a, uh, apple juice or something. Yeah. So this is it. Like they're literally out of everything. Uh, um, he was out of Coke as well, so they are out of all the drinks. So I said he should just give me whatever he has. Like apple juice was all that was left. Well done. It's like cold. It's like super cold. Like in the the mashed potatoes are like stale already. It's like uh, the food was stale already. It was like it's not it was not edible. It was it was it was gross. If you get served something like this in a restaurant, you would probably give it back to the waiter and say, "Fuck, what is this? I might joke, you know." And that's how I felt in that very moment as well. So yeah, of course I didn't eat it. It was like it was it was gross. It was disgusting. <laughs> like I mean, I like I mean, I'm not even picky, but that was like that was weird. It was an embarrassment to uh, to be served. It was just like the flight um, before the flight I had two years ago on Oman, and the same pattern, the same stuff. Where I really questioned myself: Don't they? like train their crew um, don't they spend any money on their training and if they're not capable to serve passengers in, on a six hour flight because they even like aborted the uh, coffee and um, tea service because they weren't simply capable to do that and then I asked myself if they can't even serve passengers which is their their duty they do every time are they actually able to evacuate an airplane within 90 seconds 
in case something really happens, are they up to their job? Is like, is there, are, are there any like safety floors we need to know? It's like all those kind of questions where I think like, it's a professional airline and their stuff is acting like that's their first day at the job. You know, I don't think that applies to everyone in Oman Air, but I, did, I didn't see effort. I didn't see like the energy, like they couldn't just simply be, be, be bought. So yeah, overall it was just a really disappointing experience. And considering that I paid money for this, I felt ripped off. Throughout the flight, you could see the bells ringing all the time. And the cabin managers spent most of the flight in economy class trying to persuade and look after very angry passengers. Oh my God, so the guy next to me, he's like so angry. So he just got up to talk to the crew. He wasn't very impressed either. Literally the cabin manager is here in economy class trying to persuade people and uh, try to fix the situation because half of the people are rather unimpressed and a bit angry because of the situation. As you can see, she just walked past here. So she has a lot of fixing to do. But I guess what describes the airline the best is the fact that I've sent them an email. I told them how my experience was, my screen wasn't working, the food was a joke, um, the upgrade experience was a bit of a scam. They never replied. You know, I think that stands testament for the philosophy of the management or they put their finger how much respect they have for their customer, their paying customers, because they have none. So I personally think that we work really hard for our money. And if we spend money on a flight ticket, we expect uh, certain standards and especially airlines are very eager to advertise how beautiful their cabins are, how great their in-flight entertainment is, or their dining uh, experience on board and they should deliver. You know, flying is not just taking you from A to B safely. Of course it's part of it, but that's not what we pay for. We pay for the bigger experience and this is where Oman Air like totally failed. And in a time right now, and during Corona, where airlines are begging us so hard and saying we are in this together to not insist on a refund because they need the cash flow and please keep the credit and take a flight later this year. I think this is when uh, we actually, or well, I have to send out this message and make this video and hope that Oman Air now, when they restart flying, that they overthink their uh, relation they have with their customers and whether they want to keep on going and fooling people around and offering such nonsense and not even reply to customers inquiries and I think hope that this video helps them to readjust and uh, maybe perhaps have a little more respect for people who work very hard for their money and purchase a ticket with uh, your airline. And yeah, interestingly, the saga continues. A few months ago, I purchased a pretty cool business class deal uh, from Zurich to Auckland on Oman Air. So I thought like, okay, give them another chance next year, try their premium product because a lot of people say actually their business class is not too bad. And interestingly, I got an up, I got an email this week by a guy called Joseph, who is uh, like uh, works for Oman Air and said they mistakenly posted the wrong fare and they need to downgrade me to economy class, which is like, oh, it's all repeating itself. The same pattern over and over again, like taking me for a ride once more. I think that's really uh, strange. And I don't know what's happening within this airline, um, but yes, weird things keep on happening with uh, Oman Air. Well guys, this is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, me sharing uh, my experience on Oman Air and I really hope it helps to improve our flight experience um, and the airline takes the, the feedback seriously and improves the way they handle things. Um, let me know in the comment section below what you think uh, of Oman Air and my flight in particular. If you want to see more videos, feel free to subscribe, leave a like uh, and let me know what you think. Guys, where are we off to? If you're after during these times, stay safe. Otherwise, uh, I hope you get to fly very soon. Thanks for watching.